my name is Melissa and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be making a little 80s inspired sweatshirt. I'm making two of them actually and I'm really excited for this. So when I was a kid we always did crafts with my mom growing up. So we used to sit around at the kitchen table and paint shirts with puffy paint that was like the 80s maybe early 90s. We got out our little bottles of puff paint and we just all sat around and we painted shirts and then we'd wear them all summer and it was just so much fun. So thank you mom for the fun um, ideas when I was a kid and I definitely want to relive that <laughs> right now. I want to do this with my own kids as well. I just wanted to get crew neck sweatshirts because that is like 80s to me like the crew neck sweatshirts with the patches I'll show you guys some pictures right here <laughs> that inspire me um, and then this one is from uh, Dollar General and it was eight dollars eight dollars and fifty cents so very cheap affordable it's just like a plain old crew neck unisex sweatshirt and then this one it's very hairy <laughs> you know what movie comment below <laughs> where that came from what are you doing there what are you doing are you getting cozy? This is why my shirts are hairy, guys. But anyways, this one is um, just like a, a Walmart sweatshirt. You can get these ones for really cheap every year at Walmart. This one's from the women's section. They also have them in the next men's section as well. But this one's just a little bit more fitted. And so I was going to get rid of this one because I'm going through all my clothes and like getting rid of everything. And anyways, I decided I'm just going to keep this one and turn it into a Halloween sweatshirt because I had like so many plain black sweatshirts. I'm like, how many do you really need? So anyways, um, yeah, it's very hairy. <laughs> Dog hair all over it. I got a big old pack of um, iron-on patches on Amazon. These are the ones that I'm thinking about using for my two shirts. This one came in like a huge pack of, I don't even remember how many there were, but it was like $8. And there are so many cute ones online if you guys want to look on Amazon. You can also go to like Michael's or Joanne Fabrics and they've got <laughs> tons of them on there too. Um, and even, there's a few at Walmart, but it's like slim pickings there. I wanted these shirts to have a really vintage vibe, so the patches that I was originally going to get, I will share them here, you're probably going to want these patches, um, but they were like $8, $9 a piece rather than like a whole pack and I'm just trying to make this like a cheap project. This one was the one that like sparked my interest the most and it was just so cool. And they're just, um, the back of them is like the sticky so when you iron them on they just stick on. You can also sew the edges so they don't come off because I've had some of them in the past. I've done this like a million times with my sweatshirts and t-shirts and some of them do peel up after like lots of, I don't ever dry them afterward but I'll wash them and hang dry them and the edges will start to peel up. So it is better to sew them around the edges, but I probably won't because this isn't something I care to like last forever probably. For the gray sweatshirt, I think I'm just going to put these three little black bats on it and then maybe maybe possibly do some like painting or even some like gemstones or something on here because those were all over in the 80s, like tons of the vintage looking, if you call it vintage, 80s sweatshirts would have like little gems glued on to them as well so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet here this looks honestly cute just like this it's very simple and I kind of like it like that but it's not 80s so I'm not sure if I'm gonna go for 80s vibes for both of them or if I should leave this one how it is so with the very hairy shirt <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet I was thinking I wanted this because I want to use this one no matter what but I am going to probably put this one maybe front and center. I don't have any moon patches, but I was thinking maybe I would paint like a crescent moon or something. And then maybe put this one like on the back here. I thought that might be kind of cute. And I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided like if I want to add more patches to the top or not. I also was thinking maybe I could do like the arms like the little hands by the arm sleeves. I thought that'd be kind of cute. Or maybe even this bat to like, I'm not sure yet. So we'll see, I'm gonna play around with it. All right, I popped into Walmart and I picked up some more puffy paint. I already had some of these colors, but I did pick up a few more. And this one is glow in the dark. So I wanna try it out and see if it works before I put it on my shirt. Puffy paint glows even better than I was expecting. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to see what this looks like on the shirts. But I got like Halloween colors. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. And I ended up not getting any little gemstones. I'm kind of bummed about it, but I didn't really like the ones that they had there. And I wasn't sure how they were going to stay on the shirt. 
and so I just decided I was just gonna go with puffy paint. I did get a gold glitter. The silver glitter seemed to have like really really tiny glitters in it so I thought this one would show up better and look good if I was doing a yellow moon and some nighttime stars on the hairy shirt. I picked up some more paint brushes. I've got a ton of paint brushes but the ones that I feel like I need the most are the very fine tipped ones like this and you can get them really cheap at Walmart as well for all different like amounts. This is the one I got 10 pieces and I think it was four bucks and yeah they're perfect for tiny little details like stars and stuff like that so I hope that this turns out. I've got a good little setup going on here. I've got some cardboard for my workspace, remote control so I can watch some Halloween movies while I work. I also have this cute little tiny iron. I got this at Walmart a while ago. It was like 10 bucks, I think. This thing is perfect for ironing on little tiny things. You can still use a big giant iron or a normal size one, but these are great for crafting and they're affordable. I also have some newspaper or you could use like a cereal box or some cardboard to stick inside of your shirts while you are working so the paint doesn't soak through, which it most likely won't, but if it does get really saturated, it could soak through to the other side. And then I got tape to take the hair off of this shirt because I don't have a lint roller. Don't forget a fall drink. Okay, well this one isn't a fall drink. This is actually a matcha, but get your pumpkin spice and let's get to working. I'm going to put this old rag down just to protect the patch and the shirt and then read the instructions on your patches just to make sure that you know how long to hold it on for. After maybe 10 seconds, peek underneath the cloth and make sure that nothing has moved around because I think I jiggled this too much and it almost stuck down into the wrong spot. Luckily, I caught it in time. Once it cools off, you can make sure that it's all the way on just by like gently pulling back here and if you see any edges are sticking up a little bit, then you can go ahead and do it again for a little bit longer but these are mostly on pretty good so now I have to decide if I'm gonna add anything to this one. Meanwhile I did delint the hairy shirt a little bit and I am going to put the patches on here while I think about what I want to do with the gray sweatshirt. I was going to cut out a moon stencil but then I remembered I had these old patches that I had ripped off of a different t-shirt that I had made that doesn't fit me anymore. So I decided that I'm going to use a glue. It is the fabric glue that I'm going to be using to put this one and the three little stars on because they had previously been used with an iron so I don't think that they would iron on anymore if you look at the back of them. It looks like all of the sticky stuff is gone off of them. These beautiful sparkly ones I also found in just some old stuff that I had so I'm going to be ironing those ones on. I didn't think you guys would want to watch me ironing more patches on but they all went on so well I couldn't believe that I didn't need to glue the edges down to those old patches. Before you start puff painting make sure that you shake the paints really well first and also keep a pin nearby because they sometimes will get air bubbles and you can stick the pin down in the little nozzle. Also try squirting a little bit out onto a piece of tin foil or napkin first just to make sure that you aren't going to get an air bubble because that's a really big bummer when that happens and it squirts all over the shirt. It's happened to me plenty of times but I just like to kind of fill out what I'm going to do a little bit and then I perfect it with my paintbrush. You could also totally do this all with a paintbrush and you wouldn't have to worry about it squirting onto your shirt out of the nozzle or you could use something like chalk or a pen or pencil depending on what color shirt you have to draw onto the shirt first. A lot of time if I'm doing a big huge drawing on my shirt that I'm going to be painting I will use chalk and then I'll just kind of follow the chalk lines because you can wipe it right off but the tiny details that I was doing on this shirt were just way too small for that and I was honestly really scared to do this but it worked out pretty good. Some of them do look a little bit like sperms but 
They're cute little spermy ghosts, so that's okay. Make sure that you let each layer dry before you add another layer. It'll be kind of sheer as it dries, especially the glow-in-the-dark paint dries pretty sheer. So I made sure to put that over the top of the white paint. Except for the stars, I do little stars, which you guys will see in a minute here. But those ones actually... I put two coats on them and you could still see them, but they're definitely a little less opaque without the white underneath. So while I was editing, I realized that I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So those little orange pumpkins I already made just easily kind of like circles and ovals. And I'm adding cute little green stems to them. But I think you get the gist of the painting, so I'm just going to let you guys watch in peace and speed it up a little bit and then I'll show you the end products. I've got all the puff paint on. I am going to let this dry and then I'm going to add a coat of glow in the dark to the top of all of the ghosts and then let that dry and then I'm going to make little ghost faces. While we wait for that to dry, I want to share with you guys this little ghosty shoe craft that I did last year for my daughter. These are also painted and they are so adorable and they've held up really well. And if you want to see how I did it, I will post the video in the down bar for this little DIY craft as well. how the first shirt turned out. You guys, I decided just to leave it as bats because I'm really just loving the simplicity of this one. I think that it's really cute like this. The sleeves are so long on this shirt. By the way, this is the first time that I've tried this on. It's the unisex one. You guys run to Dollar General because it is so soft inside and it's just like the perfect sweatshirt. Oh, I almost fell off my stool. I'm not tall enough. <laughs> So I have to stand on the stool to record this part of the video. But anyways, I love this shirt. I think it's so cute. And who knows, in the future, I might just add some jewels or some paint to it. I don't know. I might because I think it would look cute still and like make it more 80s, 90s. But for now, I'm really loving this one how it is. What do you guys think? Uh, let's look at the next one now. Okay, what do you guys think of this one? Oh my gosh, look at my little sleeves. Hold on, I can't show you. Can you see that? <laughs> you guys, I'm really awkward at doing try-ons, but here's the little hands on the sleeves on this one, and then I did the bat on this one, and then on the back, this little eyeball spider, which I think is so cute, but the front is so fun, and I just feel so, like, I don't know, ready to go antiquing or go like thrift shopping or something in this shirt. <laughs> I feel like this is what I'm going to have to wear on my next outing to look for vintage items. So 
watch for this shirt in that video <laughs> coming up soon but i hope you guys like it it's so cute it's so sparkly i felt like i needed to zoom you guys in a little bit for this one but i just love it so much i love how it glows in the dark i think that's actually my favorite part and of course the sparkles so i'm so happy that i found these little sparkly stars so are you guys going to be trying to make one of these for yourself at home if you are comment below and let me know um, what kind of decoration that you are going to put on your shirt. You could just totally do this without patches as well and just paint on here only. It's really cheap to just get puffy paints. Which shirt did you like better? Are you more of like the simple bat shirt or the crazy 80s puff paint shirt vibes? <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys had fun with me and um, enjoyed this little video. I have a lot more DIY coming up, a lot more treasure hunting videos coming up for some vintage Halloween treasures. I have some decorating with me and I think I'm going to do like a house tour this year for Halloween instead of like extreme decorate with me because I did a whole bunch of that last year so go check those videos out as well. I will link those in the little down bar if you want to see how I decorated it last year. But um, this year I'm going to be just sharing a lot of what I've already done and um, yeah I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So I hope that you're subscribed and enjoying my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here and we will see you in the next one. Bye!